Hello, everyone, and welcome to Prophecy Files Briefing. We're glad that you've joined us today, and I want you to stay tuned for today's message. Uh, I believe that it will be vitally important for you, and I want you to help me share this out on social media. There is much that is said in the Word of God concerning preparation, being prepared, ready, and the world is doing the same thing. Here's a few of the headlines that are letting us know that something is happening and people are preparing for certain uh, areas and interest and even war. According to the latest articles, one uh, particular entity is preparing for water rights legal battle up in Washington state. Another is Israel is preparing for the Rafah invasion, of course, and the increasing uh, tensions from the United States over the humanitarian crisis. Vladimir Putin, according to this article, is preparing for a forever war. There is another one that is dealing with Bitcoin and the current economic crisis that we're in. They're preparing, they say, for depression for years. I can see this coming. There's another preparation being made by the FDA, preparing for a possible bird flu outbreak uh, in humans. Then another article says in Texas, they're preparing for the mosquito season and the outbreak that is to take place. Uh, one particular article is that they are preparing uh, for the money rights that are going to be taking over different entities during a recession and what happens with the money. They tell you five things to do with your money right now to prepare for a recession. And then another is the ABC News 15 reports that they get an inside look on how officials are preparing for the potential election threats over in Nevada and Arizona and China is trying to boost its economy and preparing for war. This and many other articles let us know very clearly that the world is preparing for something. And I believe that believers should be preparing as well. The Bible tells us that we are to be a people that are always prudent and prepared. It is a prudent man, the Bible says, that prepares for a day of uh, storms and uh, warnings that will come and judgments that will come. The Bible is replete through that, all the way from Genesis to Revelation. It is constantly telling us to be prepared. And so with that in mind, I believe it's important for us to recognize, of course, the seasons that we're living in, the times we're living in, and what the Bible tells us to do. And there's never a more clear example than is found in Matthew chapter 24 and 25 uh, relating to the end time events. And specifically in chapter 25, this preparation takes on a whole new outlook with the parable of the ten virgins. As this parable goes in summation, uh, the story is told here and illustrated very clearly that these ten virgins are supposed to be preparing for the return of the bridegroom that is going to come and collect the uh, entirety of the uh, wedding party at a certain time that is not known to them but they are to be prepared for that return. It could be at midnight, which is typically when that particular bridegroom would come, according to the uh, Eastern type of uh, mentality here that is written. In Matthew 25, it lets us know that there were five wise and five foolish virgins. Five wise had oil in their lamps, and they were prepared for no matter what the season was, they were always ready. And then there were five that were foolish, that allowed the oil to... Uh, evaporate, to leak out, to be used up. And as a result of that, they were not prepared for the return of the bridegroom. And as it would have it, at midnight, the bridegroom did come. And the ones that did not have, the foolish virgins that did not have oil in their lamps, ask of those who were wise, give us some of your oil. And that was made very clear to them that they could not give of their oil, that if they wanted oil, they had to go and buy it from those that sold the oil. And that parable is so clear for us to be a people that are prepared because what takes place is that the groom that had been preparing all of this time, which represents Jesus Christ, preparing a place for his new bride, according to John chapter 14, as a matter of fact, and then when he was ready, he would go and select and get the bride in the totality and bring that bride to the father's house. As a result of that, oil was absolutely critical in their lamps so that the light could be burning so they could see uh, what was taking place around them and be prepared for the return of the bridegroom. 
This is a very clear example to us about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And here's a few things that I think is extremely important for you so that you can have a heart that is prepared for the end times that we're living in and for the return of Jesus Christ in the rapture of the church. Here's number one, be sure of your salvation. In other words, the Bible tells us, uh, make sure of our calling, our election, our salvation experience. Are we ready and prepared by having the blood of Jesus Christ applied to our life and our faith is firmly planted in the finished work of the cross? That, my friends, is what it takes to be able to go to heaven and be prepared when the bride comes. Here's number two, be filled with the Holy Spirit. In this parable, we see oil was a critical factor for them to be prepared. It represents the Holy Spirit. He is saying to us, we must be prepared by being constantly filled and refilled with the Holy Spirit. I can assure you, just like your physical body needs uh, the right nutrients and the right food to be able to sustain, otherwise you're not prepared to do whatever it may be, uh, oil or the representation of that oil in the Holy Spirit in our life is a daily necessity required to be able to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit uh, making us ready and prepared for the return of Jesus Christ. Number three is stay in a Bible-believing church. This is so important for you to understand because according to the book of Hebrews, we're not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but so much the more, here's the admonition, so much the more as we see the day approaching. Many people don't see the day approaching, so they neglect uh, being in fellowship with uh, one another at church. Let me tell you how important that is. The Bible says in the book of Acts, they went from house to house daily, breaking bread and fellowshipping with the saints. Why? Because it was an encouragement one to another to stay true to the faith, stay true to the Lord. When you're in your down times or your up times, it makes no difference. The blessing of the Lord comes in community. And when you have relationships that are built in the church as a believer and you are faithful to the church and serving the Lord, worshiping the Lord in that atmosphere, it builds you up. Here's number four. Stay close to the Lord Jesus Christ, the bridegroom. The closer we are to the Lord, uh, the more sensitive we are and prepared for his return. That is, stay in the word of God. Uh, know the characteristics of Christ. Let that be working inside of our hearts. The Bible says this in the book of James, as we draw near to the Lord, he will draw near to us. The only thing that has to move is me and you. And here's number five for you today in this brief. Whatever you do, share the gospel. Wherever you go, to whomever you come in contact with. I can assure you that people are looking, but they don't even know what they're looking for. And as a believer, you have the answer. That answer is Jesus Christ. If you want to be prepared and help others get prepared, now you're doing the work of the kingdom. I encourage you to share the gospel wherever you are. Don't be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ in this very end time hour. And I believe that you'll bring hope to people that need that today. Thank you for joining me for a Prophecy File Briefing. I look forward to being back with you again. Until the next time, remember, Jesus Christ is coming soon.